in order. It doesn't depend on how many times you sit here and how good and how, pr how pretty you are singing and how... That's just things that we do to lift up His name, to glorify Him. That has got nothing to do with relationship. Relationship with the Father is something totally different. It means I'm going there in my room and I sit there in front of Him, not even speaking. Sometimes you just shut up. Sometimes you don't even open your mouth. Sometimes you're just there to listen. Sometimes you're just there to be in His presence. Sometimes you're just there. And I'm going to say something funny. For some people it might sound funny. But sometimes I sleep in His presence. I go into my room, my, 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 my inner room, and I sit there. And as I sit there, somehow I just fall asleep in that peaceful presence. Man, then you sleep like that. Man, then you sleep like that. If you want to sleep, lack a go in his presence and just fall asleep. It's like you, you fall with your head on his, on his, on his shoulder, on his, on his lap. And you just sit, and you just, you're just, just there, man. That's relationship. If he knows me and I know him, that's, that, that's something different. Because a lot of people are sitting in the church and they don't know the Lord. They don't know the Father. They don't know who he is, what he stands for. They don't know anything about him. But blessed be the Lord. Amen. Satan tries to manipulate our cameras this morning again. Shame. Shame on him. <laughs> he will not succeed. He will not succeed. Do you want a different phone? Dead. Well, he it, it was, it was fully charged. But it doesn't matter. Yeah. There's another one here. Yeah? He's not going to play games with us. Let me just get to that app for you. Shall I just find that app here? Yeah. It must be somewhere there. I just check that it's connecting with the Bluetooth now. All right. Okay. While we are going on there, let's open our Bibles. I want to speak to you this morning regarding something. Everybody knows the parable that Jesus spoke about when he spoke about the sower and the seeds. You remember that? When Jesus says the sower went out on the street and, or on the field and he started sowing seed. And some of the seed fell in the ground or on, the, on hard rock. Some of the seed fell on the, on, the, on the road. Some seed fell on the fruitful ground. And what happened to them? But I want to ask you quickly, why do you think is it, is it a, a, a phenomenon in our uh, modern life that us humans always try to change God's formulas. Have you noticed that? We're always busy fiddling with something of, of the creation and trying to manipulate the creation, trying to change and alter the, the course of, 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 the, of the nothing. Goodness gracious. Okay. We're not going to worry about that. But anyway, so we are not... We're always busy trying to fiddle with creation and trying to change and alter how God created things. I mean, we are busy changing humans from men to women and from women to men and I don't know what else. All sorts of things. And we're trying to, to crossbreed. Uh, what is this other thing that they call it? Uh, uh, orange and uh, uh, narchi? What do they call it? Who? Tangerine. My soul. We all, we all sort all sorts of things. We are keeping ourselves busy to crossbreed and change God and alter this and alter that. Do you know why? Because we never and we don't understand the God who created all. If you understand the God who created all, you won't need to, under, to, to fiddle with all these things. But we are investigating this and investigating that and trying to find out this and trying to sort out and trying to understand this. And we also... And I came to a very sad conclusion in my life when I was studying. We all know theologists. You know a theologist. I came to the sad conclusion that a theologist doesn't belong to the Lord. They don't know the God. Because if they, if they belong to my God, they will understand Him through His Word and through the Spirit. But now they try to take this dead book and try to understand my God. And they study for years. And they never came to the, to the understanding of who Father actually is. They just have knowledge 
of the old and the modern and everything, but they don't come to the, to the, the realization and the information of who God actually is. And this is what I want to speak to you this morning regarding the sower. I want us to read in Mark 4, the book of Mark, chapter 4. And he's talking about the sower here, and he says, verse 3, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the, of the fowls of the air came and devoured it. That means the birds of the air came and picked it up. And some fell in, on stony ground where it had not much earth, and immediately it jumped, it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. That means the seed quickly popped up, but died. Because there was, no, there was not enough soil. But when the sun was up, it was scorched. And because it had no roots, it withered away. Verse 7. And some fell amongst thorns. And the thorns grew up and choked it. And it yielded no fruit. Now, if you go, just go read a little bit further down the passage, you will understand what it means when he says it fell in the thorns. And the Bible says, he's explaining, he says, it's the sorrows of life. It's the sorrows of life who squashed the word of God. And another fell on, on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased. And brought forth some thirty and some sixty and some an hundred. Now I want us to jump a few scriptures or uh, verses, and I just want to read verse fourteen for you. He says, "The sower soweth the word. The sower soweth the word." You see, many of us trying and keep on trying to sow seed. And we're expecting a harvest. It's like a farmer. A farmer will go out into his fields and he will sow either millies or corn or, or, or grain or whatever, sunflower. But he will expecting that that he planted, that's what he will expect to, 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 to reap back. But you see, a lot of us try in our lives to sow something else, but expecting something else to reap. How do I, what do I mean? You see, the Bible says there's principles of God that, 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 that's coming into effect here. And he says, whatever I sow, that's what I will reap. Is that, is that correct? Nobody of us plants corn and we expect a, a watermelon. Am I right? Uh, uh, nobody, a lot of people think they sow good deeds in the kingdom of the Lord and God will bless them with money. It doesn't work like that. He says, whatever you sow, that is what you will reap. A lot of people will, 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 will sow anger and expect love. How does that work? How can you sow anger but expect love? Lots of people, and especially of our modern life of today, we are walking around with and looking like a pair of bullfrogs. You know what's a bullfrog? Blown up. Of a, there's a, I don't know what's the English word of it. Andre, maybe you can help me. Uh, they call it the oblasi. Do you know oblasi? No, 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 it's not obla, obla, obla. Uh, oblasi. is a little fish. Uh, haven't you seen it? It's, it's like, it pops off like this. Eh? A who? A puffer fish. Maybe that's a puffer fish. Some people are walking around through life looking like a puffer fish. Just blown up all the time. There's no joy. There's just anger. There's just... Sadness, brokenness, there's just, but there's no joy. But they expect to, to reap joy. They walk around and they whisper about this brother and sister and whisper about them. They, 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 then they want to expect to, to, so to uh, reap respect. How does our brains work? You see, if we can just get it right to take the word of God, and let the word of God manifest himself in us. It will be a different story. But we think we can go out and take whatever we want from the word and apply whatever we want from the word and the rest is just, no, that's just, 
not relevant of today's society anymore. Do you know the Bible is like the Pope says? The Bible is irrelevant to today anymore because it's an old book. It's outdated. So we need a new one. Shame. What he doesn't realize, my God is not connected to time. So the word of God is fresh every morning. Fresh every day. Because God is outside time. He doesn't age like you and I. He doesn't lose some hair, some, some, like some of us. God is not connected to the physical realm. So whatever he spoke 2021, 22 years ago is still relevant today. His principles from then is still applicable today. When he said, what you ever sow there, you will reap, is still I mean, nature tells us that. Isn't that true? I mean, nature tells us that the word of God, the principles of God is still in effect. But we, are, we try to neglect, we try to, to dis, uh, 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 engage the word of God that we can have whatever we want. You know, the fleshly want, not the spiritually want. If you had the spiritually want, you will want the, the ways of God. But the fleshly want wants his own ways. That's what the Bible says. Don't walk by the, by the flesh, but walk by the spirit. And then you will not try to consume the things by your fleshly desires. So whatever we sow, is that what, that's what we will reap. If you sow love, guess what? You will get love. If you sow bitterness, guess what? You will reap bitterness. If you sow joy, you will reap joy. And what does the Bible says? What does the sower sow? He says, the sower sowed the word of God, not good deeds. You see, too many churches is based, their whole theology, their whole gospel is built on good works, good deeds. It's like I said to someone the other day. Show me one scripture in the Bible where the Lord says we need to look after the poor. Show me one scripture. He never saw, uh, said we need to look after the poor. If it's uh, our duty, yes, it's our duty, but it's not our gospel. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's our duty to look after the poor and to... To look to, to give into their needs, but it's not our gospel. That means our whole gospel is not built on good deeds. It's built on the relationship with the Father. Jesus didn't walk around. I mean, there he went to the bath of Bethesda. I don't know how many people were there. Hundred, maybe, maybe more. But he went in there and he healed one person, not all. Why? Jesus says, "Whatever I see my Father did, that's what I do." So he went there in there with a mission to heal one man, not everybody. Now I want to give you some revelation. It's not everybody who will be saved. It's only some. Why do I say that? Because the word of God says broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many and plenty is on it. But narrow the way that leads into everlasting life and a few is on it. And you and I need to make up our minds. We can go and happy, happy long and go with the life and, and then, you know, people think they can live the way they like, so in this world, whatever they like in the flesh, but they're expecting to go to heaven. How does that work? If you want to go to heaven, if you want to inter uh, 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 inherit eternal life with the Father, you will start need, you need to start sowing the seed that will grow, that will take you to heaven. What is that? What is the seed to take me to heaven? That means, first of all, we, last week, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. I need to change my, I need to allow the Holy Spirit to change my life to suit God, not suit me. I can't take this book and say, we, let's, let, let's write a new one that will suit my lifestyle. No, we will need to change our lifestyle according to this book. 
We need to change our lifestyle that when we open this book, it will look like my life fits into this book, not this book to my lifestyle. I need to start reading this book. The, the Bible says, the Lord says, He will write the laws, His laws in my heart. Why? Because I don't have the book always with me. But when I'm walking dur during the daily life, I will understand when and how to apply His laws to my life. I can't live the way I like. I can't go Saturday and, and, and Friday, Saturday, go to Joel and parties and drink and drugs and whatever you want. And then Sunday, you want to come and hallelujah in the church. But guess what? You're not going to make it. Because you sow the wrong seed in your own life. You don't sow heavenly seed. You sow an earthly seed. And guess what? Nothing of the earth will enter heaven. <laughs> we think we can praise God. Or we can worship God. Or we can live for God the way we think it's right. No, you can't. You can't worship him the way you think you can worship him. You need to worship him according to his ways. To what he's asking of you and me. We can't live the way we like and then expect him to just accept it. No. He's got, he's got laws. He's got the, the, his book. This book says to me, this is my road map. How am I going to please him? It's his heaven. He can allow whoever he wants. He's definitely not going to allow something that is against his word or that's not, not in his word. That's why Jesus came. Jesus came to set you free, to set the captives free. But we think we can sit in the church and, and sow. And many people think if they fill up this basket with thousands of rands, you will make it. No, you're not. You can't buy or open your, your way to heaven. Let me tell you that you can, you can, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, you, you, you can go read it, 1 Corinthians 13, he says, you can sell everything you have and give it to the poor. Not worth anything if you haven't got the love. Whatever you sow is what you will reap. Good deeds is not, is not your ticket to heaven. You can give everything you owe to the poor. It will not ensure you to go to heaven. It doesn't ensure eternal life. What I sow, what do I need to sow to reach God? I need to have a prayer life. I need to know His Word, to let His Word manifest in my life. I need to allow His Spirit to convict me from sin, righteousness, and judgment. I need to allow His Spirit to change and alter my life to His course. I can't live the way I think is right. In Proverbs, it says, there's a scripture, it says, there's, way, there's a way that seems right to man, but the end of it is death. Don't walk on a road that seems right. You need to walk on a road that is right. So whatever you sow, in this world, you're going to reap in the everlasting. And guess what? If you sow sin, you sow strife, you sow all of these fleshly things, guess what? Guess what? You are going to inherit what? You're going to reap what? Not heaven. Eternal damnation. You can live the way you like it. You can, way, you can live the way you think you need to live for him. If it's not according to his word, Guess what? Whatever you sow here, you will reap the other side. I wonder how many Christians is so, uh, when they reach the other side, were so disappointed. They spent their whole life in this world thinking they're doing the right thing, thinking they're sitting in the right church, thinking they walk in the right and narrow way. But when they opened their eyes on the other side of death, they found themselves not in the place where they thought they're going to be. Because they sowed the wrong seed in this life and they inherit the wrong thing on the other side. Where do you want to be? You see, it's very easy. It is, it's as simple as a young child can understand it. So whatever I sow in this world, I'm going to reap in the next. If I give my life, why do I say this? Where do I get it? Let me read. Andre can prove you on the board. He says, there's a scripture that says, who Jesus said to, his, to people, he says, if you lose your life 
in this world because of me you will be saved but if you think you're going to save your life in this world you are going to lose it on the next don't think this is a game don't think this is a game life is not a game we are here for a specific reason and you need to find your reason in this world. And when, you've all, when, you've, when you find your reason in this world, live that reason for the Lord. Dedicate your life to Him. Rather be poor in this world and rich in the next. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm going to repeat that. Rather be poor in this world and be rich in the next than, rather and, uh, than rich in this world and poor in the next. Or rather lose everything here and gain everything that side than gaining everything here and losing everything that side. What seed are we sowing in our lives on a daily basis? Are you sowing the word of God wherever you are? Wherever you go, does people understand when you sow the seed, you are a man and a woman from God? Wherever you go, in the pick and pay, in the spar, wherever you are, is your life always testifying about the goodness of the Lord? I'm glad to hear testimonies that God is moving, starting prayer groups in a public place. I'm, 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 it's awesome to me. It's awesome. You know what? what one scripture that, that Bruce didn't give you is the Bible says, he says, if you are ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, then Jesus will not confess you before the angels because you are, you are shy of him. You can never be shy. Let me tell you, there's a, there's a fine line between boldness and arrogance. Very fine line. Very fine. What did, how do I distinguish between what is boldness and what is arrogance? Boldness is if I preach the gospel and it benefits heaven. And arrogance is when I preach the gospel and it benefits me. Does it make sense? That's boldness. Is if I come over, man, and I know my Bible and I know my God and I give you the glory and the, and the, and the wisdom and the word of God, and, but I need to save you. I want to save you, but not for me, so that you can be saved. That's boldness. And the church lacks that today. The church is full of arrogance. Sorry, Tony Christine. Everybody wants to play, and when you play, you've got like, uh, you know, a beer board. What do you call it in English? A wide chest. <laughs> Direct translation. Huh? Everybody want to brag of what they're doing for the Lord. But we are missing the word. Churches is announcing how many people they are feeding with feeding schemes. People, churches are, pro, are proclaiming on the TV wherever they go how many souls they are saving. Guess what? The Bible says let your left hand not know what your right hand is doing. You are against the word of God, church. Pastor, whoever you are, you are against God's word by pronouncing it because you're building your own kingdom. You're not building the kingdom of God. <laughs> and when we think and then we think we are on our way. I don't want to stand in a pastor's shoes before God one day. If he have to uh, uh, stand before God and then God question him, what did he do with every soul that was sitting before him that he misled? Because that's what's happening in the church. We are getting misled. Because pastors want to drive big cars, fancy cars, and live in all these fancy estates. Guess what, my brother? Let me tell you something. I've got sad news for you. God didn't call you to be a ruler. He called you to be a servant. A servant is a servant of the people. Jesus came to take off his, his top shirt. And he put on an apron. And he says, I am the son of God. Didn't come to be served, but I came to serve. Now, who's giving us the right to be served? Since when? But you see, we sow the seeds. I know about pastors in my area here that when he stops, that there's someone with an umbrella. The sun mustn't, mustn't hit his skin. Shame. He's got someone next to him when he's preaching to, take, to wipe the sweat off. Ah, oh, shame. You became a king of your own kingdom. You're not a, a shepherd of the flock of Christ. You are a king of your kingdom. 
You're so wrong. See, guess what, pastor? You'll end up on the other side in a different place where you thought you're going to be. <laughs> we think we're playing with a God. We're not playing with a God. My God is righteous. He, is, he loves righteousness. He is righteousness. He does not accept sin. He does not accept wicked ways. We have to alter our ways according to his word. We have to sow the correct seed. Otherwise, the seed will die. And then I can take it one step further. If we, if we sow the seed, what fruits? You see, but sometimes we, we, we are, uh, how will I say this? Um, astonished. We've sowed seed and then all of a sudden we, we reap fruit. That, that, where's this coming from? This is not what I sowed. Oh, yes, you did. That's exactly what you sowed. It's the fruit that you're picking up from the trees now. A couple of years ago, I was uh, at a dedication of a baby. And the Lord gave me a message. Stupid message for you. But the impact of it, you, you must understand the impact. The, the message was, monkey see, monkey do. And I said to the people that were sitting there, I said, Daddy, don't catch your son on the age of 16 with a bottle of beer or a cigarette and then you want to kill him. Do you know why? Because Daddy, your, your son, you are the son's hero and he will do exactly what you do. Not what you say, because what Daddy is doing is the correct thing. So, Daddy, if you want to get your children in heaven, if you, want to get, if you want to have your children serving God, then you need to show them. You need to show them the way to God. You can't do one thing and expect your children to do something else because the seed that you're sowing in their life is what's going to grow. And you're going to pick the fruit of it. So what is, what is the seed that you and I daily sow in other people's lives and even in our own? What are we sowing? Are we sowing seed that we expect a harvest? That's, what does the Bible say? He says 30, 60, and 100 fold. Is that what, you're, what you're, the seed that you're sowing is producing? Because that's multiplication. That's what Jesus sent his disciples out. He says, go now, Matthew 28 verse 19. He says, go ye therefore, make disciples, teach them, baptize them. That's multiplication. And go and read the first church, what happened? He says 3,000 a day came to repentance. Three, wish, I wish that church will come back. That 3,000 people a day came to know Jesus Christ. You see, first, there were, we've got a few things that we need to alter in our lives. Number one is, I need to get rid of my human rights. Because my human rights is standing in the way of God's word to be manifested in my life. What's wrong with human rights? I've got the right. Yes, you've got the right if you're in the flesh. But you see, the problem is once you accept Jesus Christ, listen, I want you to understand what I'm saying now. When, once you accept Jesus Christ and, you, and we confess, we say, Lord, become my master, become my king, become the Lord of my life. What did you actually do? You became bankrupt because you handed your life to him. Once you handed your life to him, you don't have a say, you don't have a right, and you don't have planning for a future because now everything is in his hands. But yet we want to still be a backseat driver. Do you know a backseat driver? Man, you should have known my mom. My mom was good at that. She was not a backseat, but she was a passenger driver. I wish I could show you, man. There was a, uh, my, my carpet in the, my mom used to love to, to wear these high heels. You know, those thin, there's a hole in my carpet as she was trying to break. And a lot of us is doing that with the Lord. How many of us are complaining when God takes a turn with our life that doesn't suit us? Oh, this must be from the devil. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's God's will. Maybe you're rebuking the devil. He's not even there. He's not even present in your life. Maybe God walks, you know, Psalm 23. Though I will walk through the valley of shadow of death. Oh, great. Now let's rebuke Satan there. But the Lord is, is taking you there. Now it's a, let's pray. We fast and pray. Let's rebuke the devil. No, don't. Know the will of the Father for your life before you start rebuking Satan. 
Maybe God allows it in your life to teach you something because He wants to make you a warrior for Him. Little of you were in the in training. You were in training? Ronnie? You, you. You went to the army or... Uh, but the, uh, it's only you, so it's you. Oh, we, were f- we were actually five. No, no, I, I, won't, I won't even ask. I won't even ask. But ask these people that went for those, those training sessions. I mean, the first few months, ne, you just want your mommy. Mommy, <laughs> come on, get me. These people are mistreating me. Let me tell you something. The road that you're traveling in your life will be the exact calling of your life. God will never use you in a field that you don't have experience with or of. If you travel the road that is full of brokenness, guess what? God will use you in the field of brokenness to heal others. If you came out of a field of addictions, God will use you in the field. Because someone that doesn't have had an addiction in his life will never understand what it means to be addicted. So you can't have compassion. Don't always rebuke Satan when something goes wrong in your life. Go to the Father first and say, Lord, what is there for me to learn in my circumstances? Maybe you will get through the circumstances faster. It's not always Satan's fault. He's not always to blame. Start putting your eyes up to the Lord. Say, Lord, what is this for me in the circumstances that I need to learn? What do you want to accomplish through this circumstances in my life? Let me give you another example out of the word. Paul and Silas. uh, um, Yeah, Paul and Silas. They preached the gospel in, in one of the towns and they got beaten with sticks. And they got locked up in jail. Now what will, and I've asked this question before, and I ask again. I say, what will you do if you land with your butt in jail? What will you do? I can tell you. Oh, God doesn't love me. Why didn't God prevent this? Why didn't God that? Why didn't he? He doesn't love me. He doesn't care what's happening to me. This is what you will say. Paul and Silas didn't have a pity party. You know what's a pity party? Oh, to feel sorry for myself. Shame. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares. And you know what's the worst part of it? The church didn't even pray for them. <laughs> but they didn't have a pity party. Guess what? You must remember, they are sore now. Maybe they were bleeding. I don't know. But they, started, they said to one another, Let's start praising God. The human rights, the human rights people will say, you're crazy. You're stupid. How can you be praising God? Look at your circumstances. You're in bondage. You are locked up. How can you praise you? Let's praise God. Not for the circumstances, but for the miracle that you're going to perform to take me out of the circumstances. You see, when they start praising God, what happened? You can go read the passage if you like. It's in the New, in the, in the New Testament. Paul and Silas started worshiping God. Not just singing, they worshiped the Lord. And you know what? God shake. There was an earthquake. The Bible says there was an earthquake. And the, the earthquake was so heavy that the jail doors flew open. The, 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 the trembling was so heavy that their, their what do you call it, uh, their chains or whatever they were bond bound with fell off. It was so heavy that the, the guard came running and he wanted to kill himself. He thought they escaped. But you see, let me show you something quick. The Lord didn't put them, or the Father didn't put them in jail for themselves or just to worship him. There was a soul that needed Jesus, the guard. And just before he killed himself, Paul and Silas said, Oh, whoa, whoa, we are still here. We didn't run away. And they give him the gospel. Come on, friend. Are you really trusting God? Are you really trusting Him to do with your life what He pleases? You see, what I sow is what I will reap. If I sow humility, what will I reap? The presence of the Father. How do I know that? 
Moses was the only person ever in the whole existence of the world that God the Father allowed the flesh, this piece of meat, to see God with his bare eyes. He was the only man allowed. And then the Bible says, what was the attributes of, of Moses? The Bible says there was no man with humility on this earth as Moses. So what do I tell you? The more, the closer you want to get to the Father, the more you have to have humility in your life. The more you have to bow your knees before Him. So, the right seed. Be humble, and then He will exalt you. You don't have to walk around boasting the whole time. You don't. Do you know who's moving the world? The, the, uh, the intercessors. And nobody knows about them. They are here, they're hidden in a little room. And nobody knows about them, but they're praying. And they shake the world. They shape our lives. But nobody knows about them. Because why? They are sowing the seed there in front of God's face on their knees where nobody can give them glory. Nobody. If you want to grow in Christ, and if you want to be lifted up in your spirit, let me tell you, it's not how much you attend church. It's not how good you're singing. It doesn't matter what, what you do for the church. It doesn't how much money you give to the church. It doesn't matter. If you want to come to the Father, come draw closer to Him on your knees in humility. And humility, listen to me. I wanna, I wanna, now I want to throw a, a big rock in the bush. I'm not going to be a throwing a stone. Humility before God is not walking into his presence and say, I want, I want, I want, I want. That's not humility. To walking into God's presence has got nothing to do with I want. Humility in God's presence is, oh Lord, what can I do for you? What do you want to do in me? What do you want to do through me? What do you want to change in me? What are you not happy with? And allow his spirit to walk through your life and show you the areas that he's not happy with. Then you will draw closer to him. But it's because we want to sit and boast. Who's praying the longest? And go, go read what Jesus said to the Pharisees. He says, stop your long faces and on the corners of the street with your long prayers to impress people. You would be alone to have to impress people. I'm not here to impress you, so by the way, I hope you know it. <laughs> I'm, here, I'm here and I'm, I'm, I have to impress one and his name is the Father. That's all I have to impress. If you like me or don't, it's not my problem. <laughs> Guess what? Whose problem is it if you don't like me? It's your problem. Sort it out. If you sow the right seed, you will... Uh, 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 you will uh, thank you, Lord. If you sow the right seed, you will reap the right thing. You will reap whatever you sow. So if you want to go to heaven, guess what? You will need to start sowing the correct seed. If you got, if you want, and I, I'm, I'm sure if I'm going to ask, who wants to heal the, 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 the sick and who wants to raise the dead, everybody's hands will go up. But it's a problem connected to that. It means whatever I sow is whatever I will reap. If you want to have the anointing of the Holy Spirit, walk around, touch people, and God will heal them. Guess what? You will have to start sowing the seed of prayer in your inner room where nobody sees you and nobody knows about it and you're not bragging about it. Then you will come into His presence. Then you will be a carrier of His anointing because He can trust you. Why? You see, there's a, if, 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 if I cannot trust, you must understand what I'm saying now this morning. You must, you must grasp this now. It's all well to say that I belong to Jesus and he loves me. Oh, I know he loves me so much. Versus, do I trust him and can he trust me? Difference. It's not everybody who trusts him and it's not everybody that he trusts. If you want his anointing, you need to come to that place where he can start trusting you with his power, his anointing, his spirit. That's where you need to get to. Sow the right seed there in my inner room before him. 
Not asking, 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 asking. No, start worshiping, start praising, start giving glory. Just start giving to him a bit. Then, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. What, is, what did Jimmy Abbott always say? He says, what did he say? He says, um, give me, give me, give me, because my name is Jimmy. You remember Jimmy Abbott? Big guy. Friend of mine. He was. He's now with the Lord. You see, too many of our prayers is give me, I want. Just think in your own life, how many times did you just sit and just gave thanks? I mean, I can show you in our country. When there's a drought, we are calling for a prayer day. Then there's thousands of us go there. Then God gives the rain, and then 10 of us come and say thanks. Or maybe not even one. Come on. How do we treat our God? If he's this holy God, why do we treat him like a piece of garbage from the street? Why? Doesn't he deserve to be the best? Doesn't he deserve the best of my life? Because he gave me the best. So whatever he sowed, he's expecting to reap. Because God also sowed in my life. And he's expecting to bear fruit in my life. Come on, body of Christ. This is a message that needs to shake you from your foundations. This, this message needs to start tilting your, the soil in you, that, your, that your, the, the, the soil in your life will become, become fruitful, that when the word of God's being sowed in your life, it will bear fruit. Not just one, not two, but 30, 40, and, or 30 60, and 100 fold. Just one last thing. What does it mean to be a blessing to someone else? How do I sow in someone else's life? Can you sow out of your need or out of your abundance? I cannot sow in someone else's life if I've got a need. Because the Bible says, charity starts it. Yeah. I can only sow out of my abundance. If my cup is not running over, there is no blessing for the next because my cup is empty or half empty or whatever the case might be. So I can only be a blessing once my cup runneth over because then I've got spoils that I can hand to my brother and sister. So why are we there where we are today in the church where everybody is like, the church is, is acting like a, a bunch of, 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 uh, of thugs. You throw one bread in the middle and everybody rips and rips it to pieces. And we can't share because we are so hungry ourselves. Because we haven't provided for ourselves. We haven't allowed the Holy Spirit to, show, to sow the right seed in our life that we can have in abundance. I'm not in my prayer room where I've been filled with the joy of the Lord and be filled with the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit that I can walk to my brother and sister and lay hands on them and pray for them that God can heal, that God can provide, that God can do because I'm not there. Now I'm not even talking about the world, that the church can go out to the world and go give to them of our abundance. We can't even get to them because we can't even sow amongst ourselves. Because there's so much big need with amongst the church that we don't have to give to the world. Because you throw one bread in the middle and everybody wants a piece. Nobody can stand back and say, can I, can I serve you? No, everybody wants to be served. That's why people are coming to church, and this man standing in the front here always have to have a, a spoon in his, in his hand. Do you need something? There's a bread for you, and there's a bread for you. Nobody walks. And what does the Bible say? When you get together, one must have a psalm, one must have a tongues, one must have an interpretation, one must have a new song. Does it happen in the church today? No. Everybody comes with their needs to church because the man in the front here needs to feed. I'm sorry. The church is broke. I'm talking about spiritually. We are broke. 
We don't have to sow because we don't have abundance. And then now the world looks at me and he sees me and he says, why do I need to serve your God? You're in poverty. I'm in poverty. We are looking and acting like the world. We've got no answer for the world because we haven't got an abundance to give to them. We are poor in spirit. We lack in all ways. We can't show the world our God. How, do you going to, how are you going to prove to the Muslim that your God is the true God? How? I've got a Bible. Oh, yes, he also. He too. He's also got a book. It's not called the Bible. It's called something different. But he's got the Bible. Oh, I've got a spirit. Oh, yes, he does too. I can show you. I can show you they've got their own spirits. And his, their spirit is also walking amongst them. Their spirit is also acting like those spirits acting amongst us. So how am I going to prove to him that my God is the only one, the true living, the true God? How am I going to do that? By demonstrating my Father. Because their spirit cannot heal. Their spirit cannot deliver. Their spirit cannot set people free, but my God can. Because that's why he died. That's why he sent his son to die and to give us the authority over all the works of Satan. How? How am I going to set people free if I am not carrying the anointing? How am I going to help people if I'm not filled by the spirit of God? How am I going to give to others if I don't have a, of abundance? How? You need to sow the right seed in your life that you can grow yourself before you sow in others for them to grow. And the seed that you need to sow in your life needs to be the correct seed, not fleshly stuff, not the desires of cars and houses and bank accounts. That's worthless. You know, last year when I stood in front of a 12-year-old little girl's open grave, yes, Nobody is guaranteed that we'll, we, we will reach 80 or 100. I stood in front of a 12-year-old girl's grave. She had cancer. 12-year-old. 12 12-year-old. 12 Nobody of us is guaranteed to reach an old age. If we are where we are, we are blessed. God's hand is upon your life to let you reach the age that you are today. It's not by your good deeds or who you are, what you give to the church. It's got nothing to do with it. Out of His grace and His mercy and His kindness, He lets us reach whatever we reach. But then I realized again, 12 years old, she didn't even have, she didn't even have the ability or the, the opportunity to acquire anything, but she left without nothing. Or worth, no, worth nothing. And you know what the Bible says? I just want to throw you a bunch of scriptures this morning that you can just understand what God's word says. God's word says that we are rent masters in this world. Is that true? That means God gives up everything just to manage for him on his account. Your money is not yours. It, it's God's. You need to manage at correctly your time your health whatever you have and whatever you are made of is not yours to give it's his you want to you want to read about it go and read the, the 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 passage about job and understand it nicely when job says he says god gave and god can take away he didn't speak about death we we brought that piece into into funerals it's not it's a lie my god doesn't kill people He's not a murderer. But God, Job says, God gave me everything I had, all the wealth that I had, all the children that I have, everything. I, God gave it to me, and I know it's not mine. It's his to take, and God took it away. But you see, because Job, but because Job was faithful, the Bible says God blessed him. After his trials and tribulations, God blessed him double to what he had. You must understand something and go and read a few, go and listen to a few Sundays ago. I, I ministered about Job. And you need to understand that 
Satan didn't come to the Lord, to the Father, and said, did you see your servant Job? No. God went to Satan and bragged about Job. And he said to Satan, did you see my servant? And then Satan started saying, yeah, but he's only serving you because of. And God says, let's see. Let's see. Because God knew. You see, God could trust Job as much as Job trusted God. At the end, Job sat there, and his wife said to him, Man, kill your, curse your God so that you can die and get it over and done with. Because she gave up. But Job didn't give up because he still trusted his God. At the end, where he had nothing, not even his health, his, even his health was taken away. Job stood up and he said to his wife, I know my Redeemer lives. He didn't give up on God. He still trusted God. Because why? The seed that he sowed through his life started bearing fruit. And just because of that, he started praying. He didn't sit and sulk there. Again, he didn't have a pity party. The Bible says he started praying for his friends. He said, his friends came and they said, oh, Oh, no, no, it's gone. Oh, Job, we are, we, you are finished. Job says, oh, well, that's great. Let me start praying for you because you are hopeless. I've got hope. I still have trust in God. You are hopeless. Let me start praying for you. And the Bible says when he started praying for his friends, God changed his circumstances. You see, he still had trust in God. He still believed that God will come through. Doesn't matter how it looked. Doesn't matter what he saw. Doesn't matter about the circumstances that's not favorable. To, doesn't matter. He still trusted God. What seed have you sown up to today in your life? Is it seed that can bear fruit? That you can enjoy? Or is it fruit that you like, where are you coming from? Oh yes, you've sowed it. You've sowed the seed in your life. And don't be astonished now with what the fruit you are, that, you're, that you're picking off the tree. No, don't be astonished. You sowed it. So now if you don't want that fruit, you need to go back and repent of that. Pull out that seed, that tree with, in, with its roots and, and, and all. Go and find it. Where did you sow it? Pull it out. And plant the right seed that you will bear, uh, 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 harvest the right fruit. I want you to close your eyes for one moment. And I want you to allow the Holy Spirit to, to, to search your life. Search your life with what have you sown in your life up till today? What is the fruit of your life today that you are harvesting? Is it fruit that you, you like? Or is it not? If it's not, you need to go and ask the Father, Lord, show me where did I plant the seed? Because the wrong fruit is in my life. I need to sow holy seed that it can bear holy fruit. You see, it's time for us to return back unto the Father and start searching our own life. The time that we had these nice sermons of we are good people and everything is nice and is done. The time is too short. God needs warriors. He needs soldiers now to go out in the world and really give the, the world the true gospel of Jesus Christ, that Jesus came to die that, he, that they can be saved. He came to pay the price that we couldn't pay. But with that price, there's a responsibility coming. When I accept His goodness, His forgiveness, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, the seed that He sows in my life. There's an expectancy from Him saying, well, now I've sowed my seed in your life. Now I need to, to harvest the fruit of holiness of joy, love, kindness, meekness, all of those nice things. Go and read in Galatians 5, 22. The Lord wants those fruit in our lives. Then there's other scriptures. 
Then he says he wants hospitality. <laughs> There's a lot of things in the world that needs to be active in our lives, but it is not because we think we can do whatever we want. We think we can live the way we want. We think like, like uh, uh, um, Cain and Abel. We think we can come like Abel, uh, like Cain, and, and, and offer unto God whatever we think is right. No, it's not. We need to offer Him what is, it's due to Him. The best. That means the best of me I need to offer unto the Lord. The best of me, who I am. What I can be. Man, I am not who you think I am. I am what God says I am. I don't care about your opinion. I don't care what you see in me. If you saw me 35 years ago, you would have, you would have never saw what God did in my life. You would have never saw a, a minister of the word of the gospel. Whenever, when 35 years ago, if you looked at my life, I was stuttering. Couldn't speak. I couldn't even pray. But you see, I had to allow the Holy Spirit to say, Lord, here I am. Whatever you do in my life, let it just glorify the Father. And when he came in, when he came in, we sang a song this morning, Break Me, very dangerous song. Because he had to break me first. Because humans shaped me in the wrong shape. And he had to come and he broke me first. To assemble me. There, again, I want to say, when he broke me, I couldn't rebuke Satan. Because it wasn't Satan's doing. But my father had to break me. It's like someone's bone. Or some limb of you that grew skew. In order for the doctor to fix it, he had to break it again. To let it grow straight or correct so that's what the lord had to do with my life he had to break me first in pieces then he started he needed to start to assembling me the way he wanted me to be for many people it was unacceptable but i don't care because i'm here to please him i'm here to be his image in his image i'm here to glorify him i'm here to praise him i'm here to minister his word i'm here to let his spirit manifest in itself amongst us. If you realize that you've sowed the wrong seeds in your own life, right where you are now, I want you to repent. Say, Lord, forgive me for all of those wrong seeds that I've sowed. Maybe it's just I didn't even unintentional. Maybe I didn't even understand. I didn't know. Maybe I was just ignorant but forgive me for my doing for the the seeds that i've sown in my life and now today i'm all of a sudden i'm be, I'm, I'm i'm harvesting fruit that is not it shouldn't be there it shouldn't it wasn't supposed to be there that's this is what not this is not what, what that, that i was planning for my life i planned for my life something good but now all of a sudden i find myself at a place where i'm harvesting something that i didn't I didn't even know I sowed. So go back to the Lord and say, Lord, please forgive me for those times that I've sowed the wrong seed. And let's call it, it's Satan's seed that I've sowed in my life. And today I'm harvesting the fruit thereof. But I help me to get rid of it. Help me to show me exactly where I have planted this plant. Where did I plant the seed that it grow, that's growing today in my life, that is bearing fruit in my life, that I can go and pull it out with root and all? And if you need to make a decision this morning and say, Lord, I need to start sowing the correct seed in my life. But please make a choice for the Lord, not because of me, and not for me, please, and not for your husband or your friend or your your, your family nothing nothing to do with any other person you're standing before the lord this morning if you make this choice you say lord i need to start sowing the word of god in my life i want you to stand right where you are if you say lord i need to start sowing the correct seed in my life and that's the word of god i want you to stand right where you are right where you are thank you thank you thank you 
let me tell you quickly something as, as another thing is if you believe the lie of satan you that's that is when you you harvest the fruit of satan in your life is if you believe the lie because the plant that you, that's planted in your life is bringing forth a lie that you believe over yourself if you want to get rid of the lie say lord here i am i want to plant holy seed in my life i'm done with satan's lies and his, his manipulations and everything that is planted in my life up till today i'm done i want the seed of heaven to grow in my life are we done father we stand before you this morning your word went out your seed went out this morning I've sowed your seed in people's lives this morning. I pray this morning, Lord Jesus, for each one who's standing. Everyone who confesses, say, Lord, I've sown the wrong seed in my life. I'm harvesting fruit that I didn't expect there. But I'm, exp I'm asking this morning, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will help me. Show me where I have sowed the seed that we can pull it out with root and all. But this morning, Lord, people are standing and making a confession and say, Lord, I need to start sowing the seed of God, the word of God, which is the truth, the only truth. I need to start sowing it in my life. I need to start sowing it. And then your word says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I need to start hearing the word of God that there will be faith established in my life. And then let faith start arising. And let faith start building. And let faith start ruling. That you can start trusting me and that I can start trusting you. I accept this morning, Lord, it's not about who I am, but it's about who you are. Jesus became our righteousness, Lord. Therefore, Lord, this morning we pray, help us to sow your word, your correct seed, your truth. Let your seed, your truth be sown in our lives. And let all the lies be removed from our life. That we can stand in boldness before the throne of the Father, knowing knowing when i pray the father hears when i close my eyes or when i open my mouth i'm in the presence of the father i pray this morning lord jesus for everyone i say in jesus name lord give them the desires of their hearts as they are standing before you this morning making a choice to start sowing the correct seed I pray this morning, Lord, Lord, let this word be planted in fruitful ground this morning. Not on the road where the birds can come and take it away, or eat it up. Not in the, between the thorns where the, the sorrows of life will kill it. But let it fall in fruitful ground and bear much fruit for your kingdom's sake, for your name's sake. So that our lives can be glorifying the Father in all aspects. In Jesus' name. Become again the Lord and the Master of our lives. So that the kingdom of heaven can be established and built. In Jesus' name. We bless you and we honor you. For you're such a great, awesome Father. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for rebuking us. Thank you for, for speaking to us. Thank you for correcting us. Thank you that your Spirit still speaks to us. Thank you for the presence of your Spirit still amongst us. And I pray this morning, Lord Jesus, never remove your Spirit from us. In Jesus' awesome name. And we bless you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may take your seats. Hallelujah. Mm. 
You know what? I think, and this is why, please bear with me and understand me correctly. I will never have a Sunday school in this ministry. The Sunday school is born out of hell. Let me tell you why. Sunday school 